Two days after an anti-Semitic extremist killed 11 people in a synagogue and wounded six, Governor Murphy responded by calling for another round of gun reforms. In June, he signed a six-bill package tightening New Jersey's already strict gun laws. Today, he called for gun control 2.0. For all these big, awful events, like the slaughter on Saturday, there's a daily drumbeat of gun violence that we can never ignore. Murphy called for a crackdown on gun trafficking, requiring a photo ID to purchase ammunition and sharing the purchase data with the state police, speeding the introduction of smart gun technology, and targeting $15 million to certain high gun incident cities. Murphy and those he stood with rejected President Trump's suggestion that an armed guard at the synagogue might have prevented some of the carnage. We cannot let President Trump and the NRA distract us from the fact and logic with their nonsense that, no, that more guns is the answer. Time and again, they are proven wrong. We cannot wait for Congress to come to its senses and pass common sense gun safety laws. We must act, and we must act now. At an unrelated event on the sixth anniversary of Superstorm Sandy, Senator Cory Booker spoke about the hatred he said is consuming the country. When you hate is on the rise in the United States of America, the nation that has stood against hatred, stood against violence, stood against bigotry, we all have a responsibility to confront and address this. It's not enough to say I'm not a racist. We must be anti-racist. It's not enough to say I'm not anti-Semitic. We must be anti-anti-Semitism. The Sandy event was in Union Beach, a small town that got hit hard. While there are 330 finished homes here, 56 in Union Beach alone remain unfinished. That's 56 families still waiting to write the end of their Sandy story. That's 56 too many. A Sandy victim activist recalled the six-year fight. We fought FEMA. We fought the insurance companies. We fought the REM program. We fought crooked contractors, predatory banks trying to take our homes away through foreclosure. Murphy said statewide, 1,200 families affected by Sandy are still not back in their homes. He announced creation of a $50 million zero-interest loan fund to help those families using unspent federal Sandy dollars. And he's putting a freeze on clawbacks, which are attempts by the federal government to recoup some of the money it awarded victims. The two U.S. Senators and Congressman Frank Pallone joined Governor Murphy at this event. With Bob Menendez facing a tough reelection fight next week, there were especially kind words tossed at him. Senator Menendez has been our one-man 911 fund. Every time there was a problem, we call them every single time. He's come through for us, for Sandy victims and the state of New Jersey. And so I want to thank you, sir, for being a light in the darkness for us. How we fight back against the storms, whether they're man-made or God-sent. And I'm telling you right now, if a storm is coming and I'm going to be manning the barricades, there's one guy I want with me, and that's Bob Menendez. Yeah. Here at his gun press conference, Murphy was asked whether he thinks the gun issue will have much impact on next week's midterm elections. His answer, I hope so. In Trenton, I'm Michael Aaron, NJTV News.